and <clears throat> predict the results. Okay, this was worth three points. Let's look at some of your responses. See how this was kind of played out here. Okay, so let's look at one of the responses that you guys had. Okay, so the um, Okay, short term and long term memory in bees is not affected by the amount of caffeine in the nectar. A controlled treatment. Okay, so be careful, but make sure that you are stating that this is, in fact, your null hypothesis. Just starting off with a sentence and not indicating that that's the null hypothesis component is not going to earn you a point. Okay, next, a controlled treatment would be flowers without caffeine in the nectar. So, very good. They even rewarded that. From the scoring guide a little bit. A result that could reject the null hypothesis is that as caffeine concentration increases, the number of bees that visit the starts to decrease. Okay, so yes, that is in truth going to reject the null, but we're looking for a prediction here. We're asking you to predict based on the experiment that you created what result you would see um, compared back to that control treatment. Let's look at another one here. This person earned two two points because they went back to the null, they stated the control, but I am not sure with that first sentence if they're indicating that that's their null or not. All right, next one. Okay, let's go down here. Null hypothesis. This experiment would be to place different concentrations of caffeine at different artificial flowers and then examining the effects of the high concentration on the bees. Independent variables, caffeine concentration, dependent variables, number of floral visits by bees. I really like how this person set the experiment up a little bit. Even though you don't have to talk about the experiment, I um, would like you to do a little bit of mind dump here and put the a little bit about the experiment down on paper before you get started. Now, it is a mind creation. You're creating the experiment in your mind and you don't have to write it, but I highly suggest you do just to get your brain ready to answer the rest of the questions. So null hypothesis, they've clearly indicated that this is where they want to earn their point. Increasing the caffeine concentration on the number of floral visits by bees. Um, this is not a null hypothesis. So even though it says null hypothesis, this is not stating one. Um, control artif artificial flower with no caffeine. And the null would be rejected if the number of floral visits by bees is significantly different from the control. That's true, but that's not a prediction. Okay, so um, first of all, null hypothesis, we want to see that there would be no difference between the control and the treatment, right? So we would expect to see the same amount of visits on the caffeine treated flower as the non caffeine treated. Okay, so this person earned one point, and that was for their control. Next one hiding flowers in an outside location that bees have access to, adding and removing nectar, which in this case, contains caffeine. Great, they set up an experiment. The monitoring if the bees come back to the flower or not in the two time frames. This will show if caffeine has an effect on the bees. The null hypothesis is awesome. You see that there, I'm looking for your point, is if caffeine is present in the nectar, there will be no statistically significant difference in the rate of memory of the bees. Okay, good. So that's no difference between treatment and control. The control treatment is awesome. You indicated it is a flower with no nectar compared to one that has nectar. Very good. Predicted results are that when the caffeine is present, the bees will remember the flower and the nectar and visit the flower again. So they made a prediction. This was a three point. This person won three points here. All right, next one. This person also set up the experiment. Okay, so using artificial flowers, the person conducting the experiment can measure how many times the bee will revisit a flower. He collected the nectar from based on the caffeine concentrations. If this were the experiment, the null hypothesis would be, very good, you pointed that out, that the caffeine concentrations will not have any effect on the amount of times the bee revisits the flower. Excellent answer. An appropriate control will be putting no caffeine on the nectar and seeing how many times the bees come back. Very good. 
result that could be used to reject the null would be that the higher the caffeine concentration, the more times the bees will revisit the flower to collect nectar. Being statistically significantly different or higher than the amount of times the bee revisited the flower during the control experiment. Excellent three-point response. Um, they set the experiment up, they showed me their null, they showed me their control, and they showed me a prediction, exactly what we're looking for. All right, next was a benefit question. So let's go back to the question here. I'm gonna skip the graph for a second. So benefit, propose one benefit and See. Propose one benefit to the plants and propose another benefit and one cost to the bees. The biggest mistake um, I saw in this was that people were not saying which one was which. They were just making a statement without saying this is for the plant and this is for the bee and what it is. Okay, so let's look at some of your response. Okay, so. Benefit to nectar producing plants is that those plants have more energy available for other uses. Okay, that is a um, exact verbatim statement from the scoring guidelines. This time this was given points, next time it will not. Um, this needs to be reworded and elaborated on. They make sure that they're actually getting these points. A cost is that they may produce less honey or nectar. Again, exactly verbatim from the scoring guide. This was given points this time, but will not next time. Okay. All right, the benefit to the plants with a higher caffeine content than sugar would be that it takes less metabolic stress and energy to produce the caffeine, while also having a higher likelihood of pollination and reproduction based on the data given. Awesome. Okay, they tied in what was in the scoring guidelines, but they made it their own. Okay, they reworded it and elaborated. Really, really good job. This is because based on the data, the caffeine increases the likelihood of bee memory and in turn pollination. However, this can have a cost on the bee. So they, now they told me that they're switching to the cost of the bee. As honey is made out of sugar and therefore the colony may not have as much quality honey per bee trip and from the flower it collected the nectar from. Okay, this is showing me that the person understood what they read, what the benefit and what the cost are to the plant and the bee put it in their own words and elaborate it. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for in future responses, okay? All right, one benefit would be more visits from bees. That looks like that's verbatim from the scoring guide. Um, one cost would be less honey because of the lower sugar content. First of all, the first statement doesn't tell me what the benefit is to. This person didn't earn points for anything here because they didn't tell me the benefit was to the plant. The second one, they didn't tell me the cost was to the bee. So we have two, two ways where specificity needs to be added here. Okay, one benefit to plants that produce nectar with caffeine and a lower sugar content is that it's easier to make and the plant doesn't have to go through much photosynthesis to make the needed sugar. That's a less energy cost, so good job. Cost to bees that visit the flowers of the plants that produce nectar with caffeine and a lower sugar content is, so that was a verbatim from the question, here's their response, um, is there's not enough sugar to make the honey that the bees need to make. Excellent, okay, very good. All right, last but not least, the benefit to plants, okay, cool, we know where they're talking about a plant, um, that produce high caffeine, low sugar, and nectar is that the plants will have more energy to carry out their essential processes very, very good. One cost to bees visiting these high caffeine, low sugar nectar is that the colony of bees will either produce less honey or honey that is less energy to provide to consumers of said honey, be that they themselves or us humans. Okay, so um, three things here. You can't verbatim copy the scoring guide and expect to get response um, points from now on without elaboration and owning it yourself, okay? I want you guys to use these scoring guidelines, but I want you to make them your own. If you're verbatim copying them, you're not learning how to write for an FRQ, okay? All right, but I do want to also say excellent job to a lot of you on these responses. Really, really good. Okay, let's go back to the graph really quick. This graph earned full credit. So let's take a look at what they did here. Okay, so we have um, down here, x-axis labeled properly, 
y-axis labeled properly, scaling is good, error bars, and a legend, full points. Excellent work on this graph. Okay. Um, hope this is helpful. Questions, email me or send me a message through Remind. Have a good day.